good morning everyone so recall that we have discussed trees in the last class so tree is a simple connected graph with no cycles in today's class we are going to discuss centers in a tree so let us consider the following figure in the first figure you can observe that this vertex represents the center of the tree because each of the other vertex is reachable to this vertex with a path of length 1. But in the other case, either this could be the center or this vertex could be center or both of the vertices are center. And therefore, it's important to define mathematically or graph theoretically that what does a center mean in a tree. So to move to the center, we first need to introduce the concept of a distance. This concept is not restricted to a tree only. So for any graph, the distance between vertices u and v is the length of shortest path between u and v. For example, if you consider this graph, then from u1 to u4, Either you can follow this path whose length is 3 or you can follow this path whose length is 2. But the distance is 2 because the shortest length path between u1 and u4 is 2. So next is the eccentricity. So eccentricity of a vertex it is the distance from you to the vertex farthest from you. It means that if you need to compute the eccentricity of vertex u, then you compute its distance to all other vertices of the graph. And the maximum of all those distan distances gives you the eccentricity of the vertex. Once you have the eccentricity, then the center of the graph is a vertex having minimum eccentricity. There can be more than one vertex having the minimum eccentricity. Again all these concepts are related to graph not only to tree. Diameter is maximum of all the eccentricities and radius is minimum of all the eccentricities. So diameter and radius, very important concept. Diameter represent that what could be the maximum distance and distance means the length of the path we require to travel from one vertex to the other and radius represent the minimum distance. So let us compute radius, diameter and center of the following graph. To compute radius, diameter and center, we first need to compute eccentricity of all the vertices. Please do try it by yourself. So now you can see that, that the minimum eccentricity is 3 and maximum is 6. Its eccentricity is 6 because if I have to start from here, then I have to compute its distance to all other vertices. So for example, distance to this vertex is 1, 2, then 2, then 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, then 4, and then 5, then 5, and then 6. So you can see that when I computed the distance from this vertex to all other vertices, the maximum distance came out to be 6 and therefore its eccentricity is 6. Similarly, you must compute the eccentricity of all the vertices and then you observe that the maximum eccentricity is 6 which means this is the diameter of the graph. This is the radius, radius is 3 and this vertex represents the center of the graph. So it represents the center, it means that from this vertex we need maximum distance 3 to reach all other vertex. 
and that's why this is the most reachable vertex one more quick question find the diameter of the following graphs the first one you can observe that the centricity is mostly 3 for all the vertices maybe 3 for all the vertices and therefore the diameter is 3 it's easy to compute and for the second one it's 7 so if I start from here then 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so please do try by yourself so prove or disprove if a simple graph with diameter 2 has a cut vertex then its complement has an isolated vertex first recall the concept of a complement an isolated vertex means its degree is 0 it means it is not connected or adjacent to any of the vertices diameter 2 means every vertex can be reachable to any other vertex with a distance of at most 2 which means it is either directly adjacent or it is adjacent where there is a vertex one vertex in between that's it so first to approach this problem always if you have to disprove it you need to come up with a counter example but if you have to prove it then you must try to find an example which is satisfying this condition so one of the example is like this you can simply consider a tree in this tree its diameter is 2 it has a cut vertex u is a cut vertex and if you take its complement then you will see that here u is adjacent to all the vertices and therefore in the complement it would be an isolated vertex similarly if you see one more example then again u is a cut vertex diameter is 2 and in the complement it would be an isolated vertex because it is adjacent to all the vertices in the graph now if diameter is 2 and has a cut vertex then there are two components always let's say c1 and c2 because u will break it into at least two components if I have to move from one component to the other component I have to go through u otherwise u is not a cut vertex so from c1 from any vertex of c1 if I have go to any vertex of c2 then I have to go through u or you can see that if diameter is 2 then all the vertices in c1 must be adjacent to u because one distance on one side and the one distance on one side and therefore if there is one vertex v here and w here their distance is at most 2 only if u is adjacent to both of them it means that in the graph u is adjacent to all the vertices of the component and since it is adjacent to all the vertices in its complement it would not be adjacent to any of the vertex and therefore it forms an isolated vertex so very interesting question think over it again the only trick need to pick is that this cut vertex will become the isolated vertex in its complement the next question is find the center of the following tree now we have already know that how to find the center we must compute all the eccentricities and that gives us the center you can observe here that the center is c but in case of the tree we will see more simplified way to compute the center which is as follows so what has been done here that we started deleting the leaves and when we started deleting the leaves then in the end we will end up with vertex c and we call it it is the center of the tree why is it so it is because you can think by yourself also that from c 
we are calling it center because its eccentricity is the minimum one it's 3 yes now when i delete the leaves then the eccentricity becomes 2 then eccentricity the minimum eccentricity or the radius becomes 1 and in the end it's 0 so this is the radius radius and radius so what it is changing is that each time the radius is getting reduced by 1 but radius is not changing or the center is not changing sorry radius is reduced by 1 but center is as it is and therefore in all the graphs c representing the vertex with the minimum eccentricity corresponding to the radius so by deleting the isolated vertex we are looking for the longest path actually and in the longest path what we are doing is that we are deleting the end vertices each time so from 1 to 6 we delete 1 and 6 then 2 5 and in the end we leave with 3 4 so there are only two possibilities either we left with only one vertex or we left with two adjacent vertices and therefore we have the following observation that there are one or two centers in every tree in the latter case they are adjacent or better to say that if a longest path of tree has an even length then t has exactly one center which is the mid vertex of each longest path because it has an even length let's say 6 then there are 7 vertices and since it has 7 vertices you keep deleting 2 vertices at a time in the end you left with only 1 vertex and in case of the odd length t has exactly 2 adjacent centers so you can theoretically again read it to better understand that why the discussed methodologies work for computing the center the next concept is rotate tree so let us consider the following graphs i can number them one two three four five so the isolated vertex or the vertex with degree three is two then two is adjacent to one three so one three then four and then five yes so both the trees are isomorphic but as a rooted tree this is represented as t comma 2 and this is represented as t comma 4 so a rooted tree is the ordered pair t comma r where r is the root of the tree so again both the trees are isomorphic but since they have the different roots as a rooted tree they are not isomorphic So consider the following rooted tree with respect to rooted tree we can talk of the concept of parent children ancestor and descendants so for example for vertex u a is the parent so parent of u a its childrens are b c d so b c d ancestors are a along with r because this is how you are going and descendants are b c d are the obvious one but other than b c d we have e f g and h so very easy to follow these concepts and if we see e and f then they are siblings so you can go through the definitions by yourself and they are very easy to remember next is ordered rooted tree so these concepts all parent neighbors siblings and sisters are we can only define when the tree is the rooted tree because in the rooted tree from the bottom you can always travel to the root and if you fix the order of the siblings left and right then it becomes an ordered rooted tree so you can see both the examples is a rooted tree they are isomorphic but as siblings r has left sibling as a and the rightmost as c here the leftmost is a 
but rightmost is B. So order has been changed and therefore they are non-isomorphic ordered rooted tree. So prove that a vertex in a rooted tree can have at most one parent. So simply we have to use the concept of a tree. So if there is any vertex u and then there is an r, then of course there is only one path to reach from u to r and this is the parent. Because if there are more than one path, then it forms a cycle. And it's only the root which does not have a parent. All other vertices have a parent. So at most word is coming only because of the root. Root has zero parent. All other vertices have one parent. The last concept is binary tree. So a binary tree is an ordered rooted tree where each vertex has at most two children. So in the previous example, you can see that there were even three children, R has three children. But in binary rooted tree, it's an ordered rooted tree where each child has only two children. So you can see this is an example. So either there is one children, A has one children, but B has two children, but at most two. That's it. So try to draw all binary trees on four vertices in which root has a non-empty left child and a non-empty right child. So there are four cases because in all the cases root has one left and right child but other than that each one of them has left or right child and that gives us the all binary trees on four vertices. So last question. It says that let D3 denotes the number of the vertices of degree 3 a binary tree on n vertices can have. Then prove the following inequality. Proving the inequality is quite easy. We can use the degree sum formula. But more important thing to use the property of the binary tree. It has a vertex of degree 3 or it which is represented by D3n. But binary tree can have only vertices of degree 1, degree 2 and degree 3. That's it. So if we remember, if we know this property, then the proof is quite easy. So let x, y, z be the number of vertices of degree 1, 2 and 3. By degree sum formula, we have two relations. One is x plus y plus z is equal to n all the vertices n which is the order of the tree and x plus 2y plus 3z is 2 times n minus 1 because in any tree the number of the edges are n minus 1 so twice the number of the edges and if you solve it we will have the required answer so that's all from this class in the next class we will start spanning trees thank you